Washington, D.C. Are you ready to rock? Hi. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? I have to. Yeehaw! <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to yeah, remove my. Yeah, he's remove your harness, it please. It was a good bit, though. Yeah, good. We good. all agree it was a good bit, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want me to take that? I'll just throw it down here. Okay, you do what you got to do. Uh, today we are going to be filming a live Q and A show. It's called our postmortem. Um, if you're familiar with that. Yeah. And now. And now the magic happens. We begin. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Yuma Territorial Prison. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as on the video directly on Bun. Subscribe. Yeah. Look, uh, click. Yeah, click it up, click it up. Um, Everybody in this audience should be subscribed. Uh. <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, and for those of you at home, you probably have noticed we are not on our stage. This is not our stage. We are, so. uh, we are shooting this show live in Washington, D.C. at the Death Becomes Us True Crime Festival. With all these lovely people With here. With all these wonderful people here today. Yeah. And we'll be hearing from some of them after we hear from some, some idiots on the internet. Okay. This is from Facebook from Molly Shuffle uh, Botham. For the postmortem, Ryan, would you rather be in a room for 10 minutes with one bear or 100 bats? You just. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> hashtag Bugara, hashtag love the hot dog. <laughs> hashtag also, <laughs> hashtag also love bats and bears. Uh, okay, I, I'm, at, I'm, I'm interested in what you have to say first. With 100 bats or one bear? Yeah, I think it's a pretty clear answer. The here. bats? Yeah, the bats, right? <laughs> Like, a bear, and we've mentioned this on the show before, is truly the world's apex predator. We've... You could put a bear, I'm just, I'm not saying it'll win every fight on every terrain, but it will win the most fights on an all-terrain basis. I think it's, uh, I think it's the hippo. The hippo. Can we hear it for, what is going Let's on Let's hear it here? for the hippo. Wait, what? <laughs> we never, We've never even discussed a hippo on the show. That's not canon. I did. I've been, Wait. I've been reading. Uh, I'm just making clear. Did you abandon the argument that the shark is the apex? I would predator? say hippo, shark. Why would mosquito? Maybe mosquito up top. Uh, I'm not a. Some people didn't think I was as terrified in this episode uh, as I actually was. Um, maybe it doesn't show on my face, but when we were in the room with those bats, <laughs> it was not good. No, um, I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, it doesn't show up on camera, but there was maybe upwards of 30 bats in that tiny cave. The cave was probably twice know, the size of this Maybe the size table? of this rug? Yeah, if that. And my head was about this far from the ceiling. And ceilings, as you know, are where bats like to chill. Uh, let's take it on over to Gramtown. This is from MXPLMRS. Uh, for the postmortem, I was wondering if you were legitimately scared by the footstep sounds at the gate, Shane. Or were you just humoring Ryan? Love you guys, and I hope you pick this question. I never got on the postmortem. Well. You got on oh. it in a big way today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for that person whose name is a bunch Let's of Let's hear it for MXPLMRS. <laughs> 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 All right. Ryan, you'll probably scoff at this. A lot of times if we're on location and I hear a noise, um, I will, because I can't 100% of the time be like an a-hole right <laughs> and i'm maybe like 95 percent of the time that's a good ratio but yeah. i like to give like every now and then if i hear a noise i'm not gonna be like well it's not a ghost you idiot that's only 95 percent. that time. gets cut out of the episode yeah. five percent of the time i'll be like what was that who because i like to feed into the but you uh, did hear the footsteps i heard the footsteps i don't think they were a ghost i think it was just a noise we heard like a like a chunky raccoon or something could have been a chunky raccoon <laughs> or a big old rattlesnake a rattlesnake with shoes? <laughs> you like got, a, got, a rattlesnake got, in got a caught in your own boot. web there, didn't like you? Like one in a boot. Like hopping around? I don't know. I feel like that'd be pretty distinct. I'm curious what this rattlesnake Crazier with shoes is Crazier things have like. happened. Tube Town. We'll go to Tube Town. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right, this comes from AB. For postmortem at 12 minutes into the video, it sounded like she said Ryan, and then after that, Shane, you asked them to repeat your names, and I think it sounded like... 
She did, and also sounded like a goodbye when you ended the thing, maybe. Also, when you heard the footsteps two times, definitely a little ghoul. Sorry, <laughs> Shane. <laughs> a little one. A little one. A little one. <laughs> Sorry, Shane, but you got to face the truth here. It also seemed like Shane was a little scared and heard things like the footsteps, and when someone talked, maybe he's becoming a believer. Three question marks. Hashtag yeah. Bugara. I'm, yeah. You're going to take that from AB? Yeah. Yeah, I will. I, you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's upsetting. The footsteps, okay, and uh, you watched this in the video, right, at 12 minutes? Uh, no. <laughs> well, we can't play it now, but let's roll the clip. I want everyone in unison to say, wow, good clip. <laughs> That's good, okay, yeah, ready? Yeah. All right, let's roll the clip. Can you say either of our names back to us? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Wow, good clip. Man, I think they think it was a good they clip. They love that clip. <laughs> yeah, I think it did sound like Ryan. Granted, I know that's not gonna, not gonna convince big old Shane over here. It did say Shane too, it sounded like it. Did it sound like that or did it just go Because, <laughs> was it in, um, I think it was in Winchester this season mm, where okay. the spirit box made like a and Ryan was like, shut, 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 shut up, shut up. And he was talking to me, and I was like, what, did it, what are you, what's the big deal? Well, I'm sorry for taking the investigation uh, yeah. seriously. No, I know, yeah. I'm sorry too, but <laughs> he, he, uh, Ryan said, there was a whole sentence. And I was like, they did not say a whole okay, sentence. Okay, first off, You like, made it sound like they were like, hey, pick up some honey at the store. That's a good, that's a good advice. We're back to Gramtown. Yeah, I almost Gramtown. cut this question, but I kept it because I love the username. It is a good username. <laughs> this is from Josh Bangas. <laughs> With a Z at the end, I e love it. E-A-N-G-A-Z. Josh Bangas, baby! He's bringing the bangas. Let's hear this banger. He said, are you guys ever worried about running into squatters and then getting, like, attacked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the time. Constantly. That is my biggest, uh, that feels like the biggest fear when we're actually in some places. Have we ever told the story in a postmortem of what happened at Ketty Cabins? Yeah, anyways, this town, as you know, had only 50 people in it. And uh, whoever committed the Ketty Cabin murders was not caught, so it's very likely that this person is living in this town of 50 people. Small pool. So Ketty we are in this town, uh, we're, and we're surrounded by these cabins. We're just flanked by cabins and creepy stuff. Uh, but we can't see anybody, but we could sense the presence of people. Well, because you could see like little smokestacks out of the chimney. Houses. You could see cars, cars in the driveway. Yeah. yeah, you could see every now and then like a like a blind would go down. Uh, lights were on, so you could tell that people were there and they were looking at us. So we were already a little uneasy because they were already thinking intruders. What are these people doing in they our in our turf? Probably looking out their window and seeing us being like waka waka. <laughs> um, so this gentleman in a pickup truck pulls up to us screeches to a halt, rolls down his window, and doesn't say a word, but what he does do is give maybe the meanest stare I've ever received in my entire life. And what he did was this. <laughs> he held that gaze for about 10 seconds, then he slowly rolled the window up. He drove his car and he parked it. And I went, time to go! <laughs> because, oh, I just, bit my, I just bit the microphone. Did you see that? <laughs> that was crazy. I got so scared of this memory that I almost ran away from the stage. Uh, yeah, I, it was time to go after that because I did not want to see what he had to say. I know he was a very outspoken man in the moment, but I was like, yeah, let's not stick around and see what the, the camouflage man wants to say to us. Frankly though, you know, I never thought about it, but if I lived there, I would do that to everybody. Oh, you just mean mug people? Yeah, I'd be like, they, they know someone's a killer in this You know, town. the prerequisite like for that around. would be, uh, you'd have to be intimidating. <laughs> you know, how about this? We'll run through the pieces of evidence that people asked about. First off, the voice in the gift shop. That clearly, people said, uh, this guy, Ricardo uh, Pedroso from Facebook, thinks it sounded like, looks stupid. Uh, a lot of people said uh, it sounded like, what's that? Or, what's up? People so, perusing, yeah. and people in jail. And yeah. people in jail. Wow! Uh, it does sound... A lot like a voice man. I'm just gonna say that. A voicemail? A voice, comma, man. Oh, a voice man. <laughs> You're testing me. The Lord is testing a me right man. now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I gotta watch the episode. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No. 
no, I, I do want to grab the end of this. I want to make sure this gets heard, though, at the end of Ricardo. Yeah, it's going to be important. Comment. He yeah. says, love you, ghoul brothers. Keep doing what you do. Hashtag Shaniac on the streets. Hashtag Hugara in the sheets, because I watch these at night in bed. TMI, Ricardo. TMI. Uh, what are you doing? That's what, you watching your own show in bed. Ooh. What the? Ah. What are you talking Look about? out, boys! Uh, he, he also commented on the on the ghost saying it's hard in re- um, in response to you saying, "Do you two love each other? Are you in a relationship?" And the ghost said, "It's hard." When are you gonna pop the question? Uh, <laughs> we're going through some stuff right now. Hey, you know, spirits were people at one point too. I'm sure they have their trials and tribulations. Would I air those trials and tribulations out on, uh, on the internet? Probably not, but they don't know what the internet is, so. We've tried to explain it. Shane does start every investigation by saying, look folks, look ghouls, you have the opportunity to be on YouTube.com I think it, right now. That almost always gets cut from the episode. Yeah, I wonder why. I always try to give them a primer on the internet, and I don't know a lot of how it works, but- You guys like, gotta start uh, a trending, bro! These things, it's like a newspaper, but uh, it moves and you can, you know, I try, I, I try it. Uh, for postmortem, who or what was walking in front of Shane at 1550? Help. It just says help? Yeah. Is that related to the question? Or? I, no, I think it's related to the question. I don't think she's asking us. This isn't right. someone who's like, help. being kidnapped. <laughs> No, I don't know, maybe she needs the, the front lawn mode or something, <laughs> like, I have no idea. Uh, but uh, I've seen a lot of people comment this. It does look like the outline of a shadowy cowboy. It is, unfortunately, just the shadow of Shane's big old head. Got a big old noggin. <laughs> um, big and it, old noggin. It does disappear in a very spooky way, though. Yeah. I'm walking into the dark, uh, you know, you know we <laughs> got those. Give me something, man. Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a shadow. Yeah, know. it was a shadow. What do you want me to There's say? There's a nice way to say it, I feel like. It's a shadow. There you go. <laughs> uh, for the video, let's get a real smooth transition here. Okay, now it's time for audience questions. <laughs> Is that good? That's good. You nailed it. Uh, all right. How's, How's it, going? it going? Hi, my name's Gianna Shaw. Hello. Thank you for coming out. <laughs> nice to meet you, Gianna Shaw. Nice to meet you guys. Um, my what? question is for Shane. Yeah. So, uh, Shane, in the Missing Road Trip Family episode, you said that you didn't think it was scary if a man was chasing you with a uh, chasing your car down the street. Uh-huh. During the Goatman episode, you didn't think that um, like occultists in the forest were scary. Yeah. And during the Mothman episode, you didn't think that coyotes were scary. So, I'm, my question is, besides accidental being injected with heroin or um, or avocado pits, is there anything that you're scared of? <laughs> um, no. No, there's... <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, there's something wrong with oh. the part of his brain that receives fear. It doesn't uh, exist for him. Quicksand. I've always <laughs> thought about that. Uh, but the avocado thing was... Sometimes you crack open an avocado and there's some meat on that pit and you're like, let me get that off of there. Don't do it. <laughs> well, Just... normal people wouldn't pop the entire pit into their mouth to it get that meat off It was the most efficient off. way they to get They would bite it off. off like this. If I had sneezed in that moment, that thing would have lodged in my throat. <laughs> Well, good... As soon as I realized it, I like, ah! and I, the thing just, <laughs> the pit just fell to the floor. We spoke about this before, uh, I think in um, uh, Montezuma, via Montezuma, yeah. where we talked about the possibility that we are both dead right now. Because I was in a very near death experience with a car accident, and you, your avocado pit, obviously. Um, <laughs> but there's a good chance that we are dead, maybe, and this is all in my mind. That's, I, I think these people are real. It's kind of rude. <laughs> You're all a part of Ryan Bergara's <laughs> imagination. What was your worst case of jet lag on an investigation? <laughs> Ooh, oh, that's man. a good question. That's actually a really good question. Uh, it was probably London, just because that's the... But we had a day off before we shot. There was, there's yeah, there's been investigations while, where we landed and then went straight into the investigation. Oh, yeah. Like Eastern State Penitentiary. Other than the jet lag... <laughs> There was also Shane, the, the constant threat of Shane shitting his pants. <laughs> because he ate not one, but two baggage claim hot dogs. Well, you know. <laughs> I didn't mean to shame you, Shane, but it's the facts. Ah, there's nothing to be ashamed of. I made it. I did not. You almost shit your pants, though. It was close. 
there was a, a constant like glaze of sweat over his face the entire investigation. He was shaking it when we weren't rolling because I was pale. <laughs> And that was the episode that, in the comments, everyone was like, I think Shane's starting to get scared of these yeah, places. Yeah, because you look, because you had a look of fear in your face. You look like Haley Joel Osment in The Sixth Sense. It was great. It was, it was crazy. Rough. And then when we were done, we got in a, we ordered a lift to take us back to the hotel, which was maybe five minutes away, and the lift was, like, two minutes away. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember this, yeah. And I was like... I can't wait two minutes. <laughs> and they had closed the prison, so I couldn't go back inside the prison. And I was like, I'll meet you back at the hotel. You and did? I ran across the street <laughs> to a bar, and I walked into the bar, and the bartender was like, can I help you? I was like, do, do you guys have a bathroom? And he was like, uh, uh, yeah, over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that bar is still standing today after Shane did what he did there. Uh, Oof. Okay, hi. Um, I'm Mariah, but my question is, so when you guys were talking about how you say like the ghosts have a chance to go on YouTube and you tell that to the ghost, don't do that. What? That's, what? that's dumb. What? <laughs> because they don't know what that is, and if you say- Well, I'm trying to explain it to them. <laughs> that's She's... the exact, that's why I do it. You know what she said right there, Shane? Bad bit. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Just don't do that anymore, because they're gonna they don't know what the internet is. And if you say, oh I'm yeah, I've to tried to you, I've tried to explain them. this to him over and, over and over that's and over again. Thing. They don't real. They don't want them people to know they're real. That's probably why you guys don't get good evidence. Oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> she just mic dropped it. <laughs> that's it, folks. Okay, we gotta leave now. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Roasted. Uh, hey guys, my name's Jeremy. What up? What's up? So my question is. Out of all the true crime episodes you've done, which one would you want to be solved the most and why? Ooh. Oh man, that's tough. You do you got one off the top of your head, big guy? Because I'm, I'm thinking right now. Probably JFK. JFK would be probably- It's very high profile, you know. That guy was the president. <laughs> and he got but he, murked. He did get murked. Um, but I will say that the that answer may not be what you want to hear, because I'm pretty sure we were involved somehow. Not me and you. What are you the, talking about? The CIA, the CIA. Like, America. America was involved. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's whatever. I still we don't need know. to hear that right now. It's like a Harvey Dent situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe the Sodder children. Um, oh, just yeah. because I do think they're still out there. My question is, uh, will the Barry boys ever make a valiant return? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to. I mean, I would love to. If Knott's would have us back every year to just destroy their boys and Berry Festival, oh boy. I would gladly do so. So uh, that's for you, Knott's. That's for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, Big shout out to Annie Jung, who did that video. Oh, yeah, she, Annie did that. She uh, is a wonderful it. producer at BuzzFeed, and she was like, you guys want to eat some berries at Knott's? And we were like, oh, you betcha. <laughs> and she had no idea that I knew all about the boys and Berry yeah. Festival. Ryan has uh, an encyclopedic knowledge of Knott's Berry Farm. And theme um, parks in general, I love them. Yeah. I love immersive experiences. I'm, a, I'm addicted, addicted to immersion. To immersion. I'm addicted would, to it. You um, would totally watch a whole theme park, like, mini-series. Oh, oh yeah. absolutely. I watch a, uh, a paint-dry, boring, uh, not scary farm DVD every year. Oh, and okay. uh, it puts everyone to sleep, literally. Yeah, actually, when we shot the Knott's video, uh, there were people from Knott's who were there, and Ron was like, oh, have you seen the uh, DVD documentary about uh, the founding of this place? And they were like, no. <laughs> After a while, they're like, "Can you get away from uh, me?" All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but did you, you know, hear about actually, this about Walter Knott? <laughs> uh, my name's Lauren. Thank hey, how nice to coming meet you, out, Lauren. Lauren. If you guys were to pick one living person, like just anyone, to go on your investigation with you, who would you pick? Each Jeff person? Goldblum. Uh, yeah. Goldblum. That was that was really yeah. quick. Yeah, Goldblum would be good. <laughs> that was fast. I mean, who doesn't love Goldblum? I love that man. <laughs> He's great. Not quite as popular, but we're both big fans of Richard Ayoade. Oh, Richard Ayoade would be great, too. Yeah. Be Either Goldblum, Ayoade, who else is on that short list? Um, maybe John Mulaney. Oh, my God. Uh, Jesus, what in the world is going on here? Uh, I'm trying to think of someone else. Uh, oh, this one might be a little obscure, but I'm just a big fan of her comedy. Uh, Melissa Villasenor from oh, SNL, SNL would be great. Uh, you've, you've brought some people. You brought uh, Daisha along for uh, Oh, from, uh, yeah, Biggie. the BuzzFeeders, yeah. That, uh, Tupac and Biggie. Daisha. I would actually love to bring Brent. Daisha would be fun. Yeah, we should bring honest. Brent back around. Bring Brent back. Uh, I'm trying to think who else there would be. Um, Pepe. Pepe. Who could forget Pepe? 
Um, the Worth It Boys would be good. This is maybe think, a more obscure... Uh, I think uh, Andrew or Nikki would be fine. Uh, Stephen Lim is too afraid to watch the episodes. So <laughs> He said that to us. He has said that. Like, when, when they were purely PowerPoints, you know, like early on, they weren't PowerPoints. Stephen yeah, yeah, always yeah, calls yeah, them yeah, PowerPoints. Yeah. Uh, I love how you were like, they're not PowerPoints. Hey, man, don't... They're not, they're not PowerPoints. <laughs> um, but Stephen Lim, we'd be like, hey, uh, did you get any notes on that episode? Any thoughts on it? He'd be like, I, I can't watch it, it's too scary. Yeah, if we brought Stephen Lim on an investigation, he'd squirt out a little truffle in his little underpants. He, could, he, could, he wouldn't be able to handle it. So after watching the Collar Bomber episode, mm -hmm. I uh, went on a binge watch of Evil Genius on Netflix. Yeah. Um, so given that, and since you've gone back to the same like supernatural locations again to like continue the investigation, are there any true crime episodes where you'd like to revisit to either like talk about new theories or if they've been solved? or if you think you've solved it. Like, are there any that you'd like to revisit in an episode? I will say that we did revisit an episode for True Crime, and it's coming out, but I can't say what it is. But uh, there is another place that I, I would also like to go back and revisit. Not the case itself, but just to investigate the location. What's that? I guess I could, I mean, we're never gonna be able to do it because what? Uh, the, what the Eliza Lamb case, I would love to go investigate that hotel, the Cecil Hotel. Um, but yeah, they, they will not let oh, us. Oh yeah, because that wasn't really, um... I wasn't really much of a, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't, you weren't ghost hunting then, it was just a... Uh... Yeah, it was just uh, just me and Brenty boy. Me and Brent. Yeah, we were just walking around and tasting yeah, that Yeah, let's hear water. it for Brent. He's out there. <laughs> yeah, Brent boy. He's doing it. How's Ricky Goldsworth? <laughs> Who's Ricky Goldsworth? <laughs> How is he? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. <clears throat> You shouldn't have done this. How is Ricky? It's not Take a bit. Eyes. It's really not a bit. How is Ricky? Ricky's great. How are you? <laughs> this is I disturbing. Like you. I like this is you. weird. <laughs> what happened? Shane. It happened again. How did I get over here? <laughs> Please sit down. Uh, so I'm a Bugara. Awesome. And I have, I, I need to ask uh, advice from Shane. Oh. Oh boy. Uh oh. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry in advance, but go for it. So in the last episode, you said that whenever you were scared, you just go into your brain and turn that part off. Yeah, that's right. Do you have like a set of directions to do that? <laughs> Step one, be a psychopath. <laughs> and you gotta... You gotta understand, you like, what am I feeling right now? What is my body doing? You just gotta stop. You gotta stop it. <laughs> you just gotta stop. Just stop. When you look inside Shane's brain, it's just dashes and dots. <laughs> There's no, uh, the way he processes emotions aren't normal. You know that, right, Shane? Like, you're not normal. You're weird. You're a strange man. <laughs> you're off-putting. You said it yourself. I'm strange and off-putting. Anyway, it's very easy. <laughs> uh, I don't do that for other emotions, just fear. I love emotions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on a t-shirt. I love emotions, Shane Madej, 2018. I have them all the time. I have them all, and dot, Have you dot, guys dot, seen dot, Coco? I have them all the time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I cry. My question is, if you guys were serial killers. Yes. <laughs> What do you right. think each other's like calling cards or nicknames would be? Mm. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie. I know I've said it before, but I really am partial to Night Night Bergara. I think that's great. <laughs> I had to really think about what it would be like to be a serial killer. But yeah, but what's your th what's your thing? Are you gonna put like a little sleep stocking cap on their head or? No, no, no one's gonna know. They're not gonna be like, well, that's hey, a would... dead guy must be night night. Well, I would say night night before I killed them. I would say. Yeah, but then night, the night. authorities aren't gonna know. You gotta leave a calling. You gotta do a thing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, maybe I'd like put, uh, I'd draw a little Z's on their forehead or oh, something. That's good. I don't know. <laughs> ah, night night was here. God damn it. I don't really know what I'd do. Maybe I'll put like a, some marshmallows in their mouth or something. You chubby bunny them? A little chubby bunny. <laughs> 
Chubby this... Bunny Bidet was here, and Night Night, it looks Wait like. Wait a minute, there's Z's and marshmallows. What in the... It's a Night Night Chubby Bubby... <laughs> chubby Bubby. <laughs> chubby Bunny team-up. This team is up. the most ambitious crossover event I've ever seen. <laughs> it's a collab. Hi. Oh, I like the hat. Hi, Lee. Thank Hi. you. Magool boys. <laughs> oh. um, <laughs> I was wondering if, after any of your investigations, if you ever, like, felt like something kind of followed you home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. After I went to the Sally house, I woke up screaming every night for about three weeks until I went to go get blessed. It, and it, the reason why I woke up is because it felt like 20 people were whispering in my ear at the same time. And after a while, I was like, maybe I should go get this checked out. And I did, and it went away. So call that placebo, like he would, or call it uh, I needed to get that blessing. Yeah, it wasn't fun. I did not like it, and I will never go back. Uh, I've gotten some jet lag here and there. <laughs> Well done. Oh, I think this is the last question we've been told, and uh, I'm so sorry for everyone who's standing in oh, line. Oh, God. look at the gong. Third down. The Reaper. He tolls. So this is the last question, but after you read the question, we are also going to uh, have you help us close out the episode, if you're okay with that. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. In uh, the last episode, when you were in the cell talking to the two dead girls, uh, mm -hmm. You were talking like you were trying to contact Pearl, but you had mentioned that she had been released for her feminine wiles. Uh -huh. Yep. So why would you try to contact the soul of a ghost who didn't die there? This happens often. Oh boy. <laughs> well, this this also happened with uh, was it Capone? There's okay. So there's been plenty of cases of somebody haunting a place if they didn't die there, and I don't know the reason behind that. I don't know the this. <laughs> I'm not going to pretend like I know why ghosts haunt a certain place after they've gone. Normally, it's a place where they experience great trauma, or maybe they really like the place. Maybe maybe Pearl was like, I dug that cell. I think I'm going to spend Al the rest <laughs> of my days there. You think? Yeah. You think Al Capone was like living living it up, living was, large in there? Yeah. Maybe. Um, like I said, I don't know how they're sorted out in the afterlife. Huh. But, um, yeah, that's really the only answer I could offer to that. I know that that wasn't much. But the good news is uh, you could take solace in the fact that you could help us close this out. Okie okay, dokie. Um, I'm going to have you pull this out. Okay, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Should I be so, over there, too? Should I just sit here like a weirdo? I mean, maybe. I'm going to walk back there. Oh, okay. Okay. So what I have here, and I apologize for my penmanship, um, but I wrote out what I usually say at the end of the postmortem. so if you could say that, and okay. then uh, we'll cut to the end of the episode. Okay, you can see my hand. Oh, wait. Should we, we have to tease the end of the, uh, the, the next episode Brian, first. Brian, what's coming up next week? I'm going to go over there so the camera can oh, actually okay. get it. <laughs> All right, ask that again. Hey, hey. Hey, Ryan, what's coming up this week on BuzzFeed Unsolved? It's funny you'd ask that. Supernatural. Okay. I, uh, do, wait, do you not know? I do know, oh, but I'm okay. trying to figure out a way to not give it away. Let's just say it's otherworldly. Uh, uh, oh, is it the... Uh, it, it's, it's aliens. It's an alien we're talking episode. about aliens. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're talking about aliens next week. So uh, that's going to be fun. Stay tuned for that. But to help us close out the episode, we have Liana here who's going to take us home. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, or leave a comment directly on the YouTube page on Bun. Woo! Hell yeah! Yeah! All right. Well, I think that's our time. Thank you all for coming. Thank this you so amazing. much for coming. I can't believe this. Um, yeah, this was great. This was by far our biggest live show ever, so thank you for helping us make that yes. happen. We appreciate every single one of you, so thank you. We love y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for thank coming. Thank you.